Hi guys, Jim McClure here. Welcome to this edition of COVID Carnival, where we try to find ways to jump through the never ending hoops that are brought to us courtesy of the coronavirus. Today, we're gonna to look at using a wireless microphone in a hybrid classroom situation. This is a case where one or more students are connecting to the classroom from home using Zoom or Google Meetup or whatever Google is calling it this week. And there are also some students um, in person in the classroom. So what we're trying to do is make sure that the remote students get clear, intelligible voice audio so they don't have to struggle to hear what the teacher is saying. The ideal position of a microphone for clear, intelligible speech is about six to 12 inches from your mouth. When you're sitting at your desk in front of your laptop, that's usually not a problem. The microphone that's in the laptop is usually in the leading edge of the unit, and it ends up being about six to 12 inches away from your mouth. So the audio that you get is pretty clear. However, if you're a teacher in a hybrid classroom, you're gonna have students in the classroom, probably you're gonna be up and wandering around in the classroom, uh, working at the blackboard, visiting some of the other students at their desks and so on. So at that point, the distance between you and the laptop microphone could be six to 12 feet rather than six to 12 inches. When that happens, the sound from your voice echoes off the walls and desks and all the other objects in the classroom. And those echoes come together in the microphone to muddy the sound that is being received by the remote students. And it makes it harder for them to figure out what you're saying. And that makes it harder for them to learn. So we don't want that. So what we're gonna look at today is a wireless lavalier microphone, which can be used by a teacher moving in, in a classroom. A lavalier microphone looks like this. You've seen them before. Um, you'll see them on television, broadcasters, interviews. Um, they're used all the time for those kind of situations. And the lavalier microphone just clips to your shirt or clothing, whatever you're wearing. And it can be placed about six to 12 inches away from your mouth. So that will provide really good, clear uh, speech for your remote students. Um, the unit that we're gonna take a look at today is called the Fifine. I call it the Fifine. Uh, I don't know that I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, it's F-I-F-I-N-E. -I and uh, it's quite an inexpensive unit. It's running for about $60 these days on Amazon. This is um, August, 2020. So quite inexpensive. And we're gonna walk through what's in the box and how to set up and use it. When you open the box, you're gonna find a number of different components. The very first component and the most important one, really, in many ways, is the actual microphone. So we've seen that, it looks like this. The microphone has a clip on it for clipping on your clothing and it has a connector on the other end which will plug in to the next piece, which is the transmitter. The transmitter looks like this. Small box, it's powered by two AA batteries um, it has a belt clip on the back, so you can, if you're wearing pants and you have a belt, uh, you can clip it to your belt. Um, if you're wearing a dress, uh, I've seen uh, some women take the unit and clip it over the back of their bra strap in the back of their outfit, and then run the cable around under their dress and up to the microphone. So one way or another, it's, it shouldn't be too hard to find a place to mount this on your person. The next thing that's in the box is something that I'm not actually going to use, but you might find it useful, and that is a headset microphone. Headset microphones are the type of thing that you probably have seen on exercise videos. So someone, you know, wears the, wears the microphone like this. Um, I find them obtrusive, and the quality really isn't that much better. Uh, I guess it could be useful if you're in a really high noise situation uh, where there's a ton and tons of noise then this gets the microphone closer to your lips. But if it's a normal classroom, I don't think you're gonna need that and they are distracting to look at. So the lavalier will probably work uh, quite nicely for you. The last piece that's in the box is the receiver. This is the receiver. That's it. Let's see if I can turn it so it's right side up. Uh, the receiver is a USB stick. It just plugs directly into your laptop. That's it, uh, standard USB connector. If you don't have a standard USB connector on your laptop, uh, for example, maybe you just have USB-C, which are the little tiny ones, 
um, you're going to need a cable to adapt from USB-C to standard. And those are pretty easy to find. They're not very expensive. You should be able to get one on Amazon. But my experience is that most laptops do have at least one or two of the standard USB plugs, and that's all you need to plug this thing in. Uh, the other thing you should have if you're going to use one of these units is you should have some rechargeable batteries. Um, I recommend getting four rechargeable batteries and a charger. Uh, these happen to be PowerX, but there's lots of different kinds of batteries that are available. They're all quite good. And this unit does not take a lot of power, so the battery should last for many hours uh, without running down. If you have four, you'll be able to swap two in and two out. The transmitter takes two at a time. So that means you can always have two in the charger. So we're going to get started. I'm going to take the transmitter and I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to place the batteries in. Watch the direction of the batteries. Make sure they're pointing the right way. There's a legend on the inside to show you which way they go. All right, so that's it. And then we're going to take the lavalier mic itself. And I'm going to plug this into the transmitter. Uh, the plug on the lavalier has a little bump on it, which means you can only plug it in one way. And when you push it in, you'll feel it snap. And once it's in, it will not come out easily, which is nice. You won't yank it out by accident. In order to take it out, there's a little button on the side. You have to press down on the button and then pull. And that's how you get it out. If you just pull on it without pressing on the button, it will not come out, which is by design. Now, um, where would we want to mount the microphone? Uh, the best place to mount the microphone is in your sternum area. I'm going to try and scoot up a little bit so you can see that. That would be right about here. If you're wearing a shirt, you can clip to the side of your shirt. Um, if you don't have an area there to clip, you could clip it here, this type of shirt that I'm wearing. OK, that'll work great. You can, if you get stuck, clip it up on a collar. Let's see if I can do one such that the microphone is on the outside of the collar. Um, the only downside to doing this is that if you look away from the microphone, the sound volume may go down. So it's nice, if you can, to keep the microphone in some central place. You don't want it to get too far up to your chin. Your chin acts as a sort of cast kind of shadow, uh, audio speaking in, in terms of audio. So best quality is really around your sternum or you know, maybe here if, if you can do that. We want to turn the transmitter on. So I'm going to press and hold the on off button on the front of the unit. And when I do that, you'll see yellow light comes on. Uh, the unit is displaying the radio frequency that it's using to communicate with the receiver. You really don't need to worry about that. The only case where that might be important is if you have several of these operating in the same area. For example, if you've got several teachers using these units and they're pretty close together, you might get some interference from them. There is a way to solve that problem by selecting a different radio channel. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I will have a separate video that shows you how to do that. My experience is you probably won't need to do that. It's, it's not so common. But if you are close to another uh, teacher using one of these, I'll show you how to change the radio frequency. All right, so the last thing we need to do to get this um, physically functioning is to plug in the receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my laptop. When I do that the first time, you may see a message that says, getting your device ready for use, or something like that. Uh, that means that the computer is downloading some software that it needs to help the device work. Uh, it's good to have uh, good quality Wi-Fi when you first plug it in. That download will happen only once, and then after that, the software will stay on your laptop, and you won't have that. You won't see that message again. If everything works nicely, you will see that there is a blue light, which is glowing solidly on the receiver. The blue light says that the transmitter and receiver are talking to each other. If the blue light is not glowing, or if the blue light is blinking, check your transmitter. Make sure that it's on. You know, check your, if it's not on, check your batteries. Maybe the batteries are in incorrectly or they're dead. Um, if that's still not working, you might have some interference from another unit. And uh, I'll walk you through resetting the radio frequency in the, in the companion video. 
But generally, I've tried this with um, three different systems, uh, different laptops, and I haven't had any issues yet. I just plug it in, and within about a minute of the first time that I plug it in, it's up and running. So um, that's pretty nice. The next thing we want to do is we want to tell the software that we're using that we want to use the Fifine microphone for our audio and not the microphone that's built into the laptop. I'm going to demonstrate that with the Zoom application, but they're all pretty much the same. In Zoom, you'll notice that there's an icon down in the lower left, uh, which looks like a microphone. I have started a Zoom session, and I'm going to click on the little up arrow, which is next to the microphone. And when I do that, at the very top of that menu is a section which says select a microphone. And you should see listed under that section, uh, it's kind of a strange name. It would be nice if it just said Fifine, but it, it may not. Uh, it depends on the computer that you have. It might say USB PNP audio device. USB is the connector that we plugged it into. PNP stands for plug and play audio device, and that is the Fifine unit. Um, you might also see, for example, your laptop microphone. In my case, it says Realtek High Definition Audio. So you want to make sure that the uh, USB PNP audio device is the one that's selected. Now, there is one other step. Um, for some reason, when you plug the Fifine in, it selects the Fifine itself as the audio output, and we don't want that. We want the audio output normally to go to your speakers in your laptop, and that will allow you to hear the remote students and will let the class hear them as well. So make sure that you go down to the part that says select a speaker and select the speakers for your laptop and not the USB PNP audio device. So I'm going to do that. And uh, as soon as that's all set, if you hover your mouse down on the uh, control bar at the bottom of Zoom, you'll see, you should see, the little microphone bouncing up and down. There's a green, should be a green signal that will um, illuminate as you speak. And that's it. You're, you're ready to go. Um, the system is using the, the lavalier for your voice and transmitting it to the remote students. And they're going to get much better quality audio if you're moving around the classroom. If you do happen to sit right down in front of the laptop, you may get some feedback. Feedback happens when the sound comes out of the speakers, goes into the microphone, goes back into the system, comes out of the speakers, goes into the microphone, and so on forever. Uh, you've heard feedback many times, I'm sure. It's that whistling, whining noise that uh, you might hear at a concert or something like that. The trick is just not to sit too close to um, the laptop when you have this on. If you are going to be sitting directly in front of the laptop for your whole session, you don't need this. Your laptop microphone will do just fine. But if you are going to be moving around the classroom, probably you won't have problems with feedback. Uh, you're going to be far enough away, and this microphone is directional enough that you shouldn't um, have an issue with feedback. There is one other topic that I want to uh, discuss quickly, and that is the topic of privacy. Uh, you are wearing a sensitive microphone that will capture your voice wherever you are. If you have to go to the restroom, or if another teacher or parent comes into the classroom to have a quick conference, uh, you want to turn your transmitter off. The way to do that is just hold the button down until the light goes out. And then you have privacy. Um, if you don't do that, things could get exciting. And we don't want that. That's it for today. Um, the Fifine is a nice uh, wireless lavalier mic that will give uh, high quality speech to your remote students and will not interfere with your in-class students. They'll still be able to hear you just fine. Um, it's not very expensive. It's about $60-ish um, on Amazon these days. And uh, it's quite simple to use and pretty good quality. The sound quality is actually pretty good considering how incredibly inexpensive this thing is. So um, that's it for today. Have fun. Hope you enjoyed COVID Carnival, where we've figured out how to jump through at least one more hoop that the coronavirus has thrown our way. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, there is a feedback form on the website, betsiesfolly.com. And uh, I do want to throw in a quick pitch for my daughter's Instagram account. Uh, my daughter, Rebecca, is a teacher in Massachusetts. She teaches middle school English, and her Instagram is McClure in the Middle. 
She has lots of tips and suggestions that she's sharing from herself and from other teachers um, dealing with teaching in the era of COVID. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us.